All right, well, moving on. And Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is calling for Eritreans involved in this weekend's violent clashes to be deported. People opposed to the Eritrean government fought with regime supporters in front of the embassy in Tel Aviv. Israeli security forces responded with stun grenades and live ammunition. At least 150 people were injured. Violence also broke out in Zurich and Norway as rival Eritrean factions marked the National Independence Day. President Isias Afwerki has ruled Eritrea as a one-party dictatorship since 1991. Well, Eritrean human rights activist Selam Kadani is here to help us go a little deeper into this topic. Joining us from London, a, a warm welcome to you. The images that we got from Tel Aviv yesterday uh, appear to be particularly violent. Do we know why, Selam, it escalated to such an extent and from whom this massive violence uh, originated? Thank you for the invitation, Anthony. Yes, they were gruesome and they were very difficult to watch. Um, and um, it's, it, at this point, it's very difficult uh, to say exactly when and where um, the the violence or the skirmishes started. However, uh, over the weeks. Um, uh, preceding the event uh, event yesterday, the government of Eritrea and the embassy in Tel Aviv uh, have been putting out social media images of um, groups of young people that they were talking to and training, and they had uh, uh, they had given them special T-shirts that are identified with their own slogans and identity. They called them um, for G and uh, Hadelibi, so it was very uh, well uh, orchestrated. Um, taunting uh, um, and 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 also the the fact that uh, the the events that uh, the young people have the young asylum seekers had wanted to be stopped they had asked the police to not let it go because it was preparing uh, a lot of young people to be violent against each other so right. uh, although it's very difficult to pinpoint where it started um, I, I I had seen evidence of what was about to happen way before yesterday. Salam, we had quite some reactions to our coverage, as you would understand, on, on YouTube, for instance. Some of our viewers say that the majority of the violent demonstrators are actually not from Eritrea but are coming from the Tigray region in northern Ethiopia. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, um, I mean... Factually, it's it's impossible to say where a lot of these people are from. It's very difficult to tell these people apart. So I don't think anybody can say with any if anybody says with any certainty where these people are from. They're basically lying. However, as an Eritrean activist for many years, as a human rights activist, I've been called non-Eritrean almost every time uh, I have um, spoken against the government in Eritrea. This is a well-known tactic of the regime in Eritrea. You used for generations, it's not new, uh, for generations used against anybody who protests against the regime in, in Eritrea. So previously, when um, Muslims, Muslim Eritreans spoke against the regime in Eritrea, they were called uh, jihadists. Um, and, le you know, later on, uh, those of us that are not, uh, that speak Tigrinian are, are from the highlands, uh, are called uh, Ethiopians, but more specifically Tigrayan. So it's nothing new, but... Um, uh, just one way of proving it's not uh, the reality is to say, like, who can tell? Who can tell from those images yesterday where these people are from? Indeed, these clashes occurred in, in several places um, in the past weeks and months, Germany, Sweden, Canada, United States, and they were more or less violent all, all over. Uh, why is there suddenly a pattern in so many places? There's, there's extreme bitterness amongst young Eritreans who had fled the regime. A lot of them, nearly all of them, would have fled the indefinite national service. A lot of them would have served many years, despite the fact that the national service was only meant to be 18 months. And they have escaped. There's shoot-to-kill policy on the borders. There are gruesome, gruesome journeys ahead of them. The desert, human trafficking, the, the, the high seas and everything. And they survive all of that to arrive at places that are deemed safe 
only to be confronted by this regime and its propagators and the 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 propaganda that is being um, that is being spewed out of these events that the government orchestrates is antagonizing them is dehumanizing them and also is threatening the little bit of safety that they have gained so they're angry they're uh, lashing out and uh, unfortunately for all of us it's ending up in this um you know gruesome right. situations Eritrean human rights activist Salam Kidani, thank you so much for your input today. Thank you very much, Anthony.